Greetings and welcome back, one and all, to From the Depths and to the Plunderer, which was recently captured and may actually be called upon to uh, serve in the defense of this location straight away. As you can see over there, in fact, I'll pull everything out just so that uh, no enemies spawn in. We have enemies right at the gates. I mean, they're literally on top of us right now. And over here... We have the Armok still in place, pretty much as we saw it last. But uh, those who are familiar with the game will immediately recognize what this shape means. It's a flyer, it's a vertical column. There's really, I think there are two possible uh, uh, possibilities, but generally, if you see three of them, uh, they're part of a, f a special fleet, the Coffin Nail Fleet. Quite possibly the most deadly combatants, air combatants, it is part of a fleet in the the deep water guard. So three coffin nails, quite quite worrying, quite worrying indeed. Different altitudes. These two fairly high, that one fairly low. And the plunderer, thankfully, is up to ninety six percent of its maximum health. I'm not sure how that's really going to put us in terms of uh, how we're going to stand with this, but uh, well. It's here to defend the Dark City. That's the whole whole idea is that it will be part of the Dark City's defense. We'll slowly have this this uh, group of vessels that are that are going to be required to defend the Dark City. And on that note, we may as well um, change the forces over here. Where is structure? Home sweet home. Wanda, you're leaving that fleet. I want you to come over here. I want to find the Wanda specifically. Wanda, there you are. I want you to be over at the Dark City from now on. Around here. Way up in the sky. There we go. That's that's your destination. Okay, you can't quite get that high. Fine, go there. But there we are. There's not much for us to do. Oh, it's night time. That's, it's a terrible time to engage. But, uh, well, this is it, everyone. I'm fairly confident that the Armok is going to be able to do a staggering amount of damage to the Coffin Nails. But with three of them, if it was one-on-one... -on -one, there would be absolutely no contest. The Armok would win. But with three, that's a little bit of a worry. It depends on how well the the uh, surface forces are able to hold the Coffin Nail's attention. But the first thing to load in, Armok's throne. There we go. That should all be loaded in now. Nothing has changed, really. Um, I should change things. I want to add another Armok silo, but as you may notice, we're fairly metal-starved. Next thing to load in... Plunderer, followed by... And I'm not going to load in the whole of our fleet. Oh, I can't load in the... Uh, anything else. Okay, that's fair enough. We've uh, used a lot of the points here, and wow, that plunderer is getting involved. It's getting right involved. So is the uh, Armok. The Armok has launched the anvil. And the plunder is getting quite badly damaged here. It's not at full capacity, but it has been doing damage to these things. And its anti-missile system is active. That is fantastic. That may help save the uh, the Armok. But it looks like the Coffin Nails have decided the Armok is the larger threat, even though they cannot hope to damage it from this angle. The missiles eventually will because they're launched vertically. But one of the... Uh Oops. There we are. One of the coffin nails hasn't been loaded in due to the amount of blocks in play. Let's see how this goes. Oh, something hit something there. Oh no, that's that's right. Even when uh, bullets just blow up against. Ooh, that's not good. Why? Why? No, don't don't explode underneath there. I need clearly to make a metal skirt of some sort to protect it. Oh my goodness, that is not good. Don't like that at all. Yep, it exploded. It exploded very, very nearby, actually. That is terrifying me. Okay, well, uh, thankfully the AI is dead on one of the coffin nails. <clears throat> Excuse me, a bit of a throg in my throat. And the anvils are going for the second one now. Let's actually see, how are you set up? You're all attacking salvage. Uh, ignore salvage, thank you. I don't want you to attack something that's already out of play. I want you to go only for things that are an actual nuisance. But there we are, the plunder with its multiple weapon systems, its cannons, its missile defense, its missiles. Did a very good job of, of keeping these guys occupied there. 
We can probably load in the Abaya now, but I'm not actually sure there's much point in having an Abaya in play at the moment. It would have there would have been quite a lot of points if the plunderer was nearby, but not so much anymore. And the anvil's coming in. Oh no, I've been shot! <laughs> you scallywag! You took me out! Right, okay, well, uh, let's go to the the flagship then. I was aboard the plunderer. I was just sitting in the middle and then I got shot at. I sh really should have just gone straight back to the... Uh, the... <laughs> Armok. That was a bit silly of me. Okay, Armok's throne. Load in. And plunderer. Load back in. Very sorry, everyone, for that slight bit of uh, distraction there. Oh, and uh, when it says that AI waiting for missile control... That is because you are too close to one of the AIs. Uh, sorry, one of the weapon controllers. And you've basically taken control of a weapon system. So, uh, I know this is a stupid place to go, but it's probably one of the most heavily defended. So I'm just going to go and sit in here and pray. Hopefully I'm too far away to control any of the missiles. Yes, I am. Good. Okay, there we go. The Armok is getting back involved. And is doing significant amounts of damage. Actually, at this point, the Abaya would be worth bringing in because these coffin nails are sitting in the water. If the Abaya can sink and repair its torpedo system, it would then be able to actually provide some uh, weapons fire. But this is just an exchange of cannon fire right now whilst the Armok is delivering the hammer and the anvil. So the Plunderer is doing a fantastic job of just keeping these things focused on it. And unable to really gain any altitude. The cannon fire from the from the plunderer, although it's starting to dwindle now, was absolutely fantastic. Really, really useful. There we go. Huge amounts of damage being applied, and the anvil is making sure that there is nothing, no brain here anymore. We've cut off the head of that coffin nail, and it is gone. Okay, last coffin nail. Your time to spawn in, I think. Maybe, possibly. Yes. There we go. Okay, it's got no means of getting out of the water. That's interesting. Who is it going to fire on? It's going to try and fire on the plunderer. Is the plunderer able to return fire? Yes, it is. Fantastic. Let's go and check out what's happening with the plunderer. Uh, it's taken a fair bit of damage. It's lost some of its mis uh, cannon systems. And one there is just like completely busted up. It has no elevation module. But the Armok will finish this off, even if the Plunderer despawns. In fact, I'm going to despawn the Plunderer. No, I can't. 704 seconds before I can despawn. It must be based on how much the ship is worth. Honestly, at this point, I'm almost tempted to just despawn, uh, break down the Plunderer just for its uh, metal. But right now, it is the only cannon ship in our fleet. And as many people have been commenting, we need ships with different weapon systems. Right now, it's all about missiles. If a sufficiently heavily protected ship with a uh, anti-defense, uh, sorry, anti-missile laser system came along, we'd be completely impotent against it. We need cannons. We need lasers eventually as well, but uh, cannons for now. There we go. Here come the hammers. And the anvils will just keep it from engaging with its cannons. Not that we could do a lot at this point. Ooh. The hammers seem to uh, miss their target. That's a little bit annoying. If the plunderer could spin around so its cannon system could engage again, that would be grand. In fact, you know what? With the amount of resources we've got now, I could probably afford to warp to force on the plunderer itself and help with the repairs. Now, I've taken out the chair because it was annoying the dickens out of me where it was placed, because I couldn't actually get off the chair when I spawned in. I'll show you what I mean. The chair was up here, in a tiny little cockpit room. And in there, this was the chair. But because it's so high, uh, so um, shallow, this room, I was just stuck. But I guess perhaps I should have a chair, just so I know exactly where I'm going to spawn in. Kind of annoying, but uh, there we go. Uh, we'll pop it for there. There we go. Right, okay. So, victory is ours. And we got a fair chunk of metal from that as well, actually. We're still bringing it in. Okay, not not too terribly bad. Not too terribly bad. The Abaya, is the Abaya nearby? The Abaya is just over there. If we can actually sail close enough to the Abaya, 
Then the Abaya's repair systems will engage. That's right. Come just over the top. Maybe I should help the Abaya. The Abaya is in a sorry state of affairs as well. Oh my lord, all of my ships are so badly damaged. Let's get inside. Hello! We are back! Ah, ah, there we are. And we are upside down! Though, we are very quickly writing ourselves because we've got enough metal to repair this thing quickly. Please don't crash. That would be counterproductive. You just hold that position there. That's right. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, I'm going to allow the Plunderer and the Abaya to be fully healed up, I think. The Plunderer is going to be a very important part in the Dock City's defense for the time being. Until we've actually built a cannon ship of our own. But I think that's probably going to be one of the next things that we really, really have to look at working on. Is a cannon ship. Let's uh, unhook my camera from there. There we go. That's actually not too bad. Not too bad at all. Why is that flag still not set? Ah, the frustrations. I will work it out eventually. I have set up the flag and it says it's set up, but it's clearly lying to me. But there we are. How is the plunder doing? 96% of that and the Abaya is almost at 18, uh, almost at 90%. Is it now sealed in? I think the Abaya may be airtight. Ah, fantastic. Are we airtight? No. Almost. Just need a little bit at the back there. And then this sub will once again be airtight. I, I'll feel much more confident about it then when it can't flood with water and sink. Not that we actually want to uh, rise to the surface too often anyway, but uh, still, it's not really a very good sub if it's full of water. Oh, well, actually, we've got loads of holes. One, two, three. Damn it. We really haven't gone very far with fixing this, come to think of it. But uh, we're now down at the... Uh, the, the desired depth so the uh, control systems are all in place all right then I think I think it's high time that we started looking at well I want to say a cannon ship but realistically we need more resources so it's time for us to design a resource gathering outpost now I want something fairly cheap this time so it's probably gonna be made almost entirely of wood we don't need it to be expensive later on we'll upgrade this one to a much more robust one because it's going to be part of the dock city effectively but for now we just want something that can gather resources now let's check on the map make sure we're not about to be attacked by something horrible but uh, no it looks like we're okay okay then well on the screen right about now we're going to see an annotation which will lead you to a design video in which i'm going to design a small outpost well i say small it's probably going to be big but it's going to be made of wood so it'll hopefully be a relatively cheap outpost for gathering resources i will probably make it armed we'll have to see but i will be back in just a few moments and welcome back now you've returned to a fully repaired abaya because i need the abaya to construct our new resource gatherer but unfortunately because the abaya was so badly damaged there was no way of me telling the Abaya not to use up all of its resources fixing itself and instead focus on the, the new structure. So I basically passed time for a bit, fixed it, and then got enough resources for us to put this uh, new structure together. Now, if you recall, my chief design goal was to make a cheap, expendable fortress. Ah, how naive I was to think that I could achieve such a task. As you can see there... 14,000 na natural, 5,000 metal, 3,500 oil, 5,000 scrap, 11,000 crystal. Slightly higher amounts than uh, those who joined me in the build video will have seen because I added just a few more things onto it and then obviously painted it. Now, no one has seen the new paint work, so uh, let's get this spawning. In fact, let's put it out to about 20 meters ahead of ourselves. Now, I should have enough resources to build this all in one go so hopefully the abaya can put it together now then it's also the the thing that i've added is repair bots on the outside previously i had the repair bots all internal to the structure and that didn't really work out too well because if there was damage outside but uh, no actual breach to the structure then it wouldn't be able to repair itself so i put this all together now i'm not going to go over exactly what i've built and exactly what it can do because that's all shown in the build video but uh as a very brief 
uh, explanation. It is a resource gathering fortress. It has no weapons. It can resupply any ships nearby, but that's it. It can't do anything else. It can't build things. And the last thing I'll say is that the uh, rotor blades are non-functional. It doesn't actually need them to work. Now, I'm going to jump over to this, the Herb Enu there, warp to its chair, and then I'm going to get this out of the water. Now, it is a fortress, and that's why the rotor blades don't actually help it. Ooh, of course, yes, it's currently locked in there. You can let it go now. But uh, the rotor blades are, are currently just there for aesthetics. I wanted to try and make it a vehicle, but I couldn't for various reasons, and so I've made it into a fortress instead. Now, really, are you going to be all kinds of weird because of that? Ah, oh, it is. Unfortunately, it seems that because the Abaya kind of pitched it to the side, that it's uh, loaded in kind of all askew. There's an easy way to fix that. You load it out, you let it align itself, you load it back in. There we go. Now then, as I was saying, the rotor blades are non-functional. They're just there for aesthetics. There's no way that something this big, even though it's mostly made of wood, would be able to lift itself with those tiny little copter blades, even with the ones on the bottom. But uh, I'm actually pretty, pretty happy with it. It's got a very nice little design. And my plans are to take this design and continue to evolve it over the course of the campaign for my various other resource gathering outposts. The idea would be that each one, each... Like, this one is basically meant for calm waters. We're not putting it in calm waters right now, but it's meant for calm waters, where it's realistically not going to expect to see any conflict. Then the later versions will be more armoured, more weaponized versions that can even act as frontline bases, so perhaps they'd have spawning and scrapping capabilities. This has none. It can't build anything. It can't repair anything. It can only resupply, and that's all it's really meant for. But uh, later versions may actually be capable as forward bases, for uh, for our operations but there we are so that has all been put together and I'm really quite proud of it so a little little bit more of a glance at the paintwork little like kind of star motif on the outside and uh, underneath much the same as the top really but uh, the rotor blades got a nice little bit of uh, paint on them just to give them a little bit of character and there we go now Let's check on the map. Have we got any issues? We don't actually have any issues, which is very nice to see. We are almost back up to the point where I can build another. In fact, ooh. Hmm. I think so, honestly. I think so. We're going to hop over to the starting fortress, warp to force. There we are. <laughs> this is going to feel a little bit cruel. There is cruelty in what I'm about to do. I'm going to have something build the thing that's going to replace it. That, that's like telling someone to dig their own grave and build their own coffin. That's, that's rather horrible. A coffin that's going to eat them. Uh, I, I, think, I think I woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. I, I think maybe Dark Avak woke up instead. Nevertheless, here we are. Let's get that spawned. It's going to cost 5,000, but uh, we're not that far off it, so it shouldn't be too bad. Really? Why are you wasting my, my precious metals? Okay, well, that's that's wood, I suppose, so it's okay. But uh, hopefully we can get this put together pretty quickly. In fact, let's uh, lift ourselves a little bit further out of the water. After that, we'll be able to... Uh, ooh, you, oh, it's that one that's complaining because we haven't yet built the engine. That's fine. But uh, once we reclaim this, we can take back the engine and all the turbines and everything in here. Now, the only thing with that is we'll lose our crystal growth farm. That'll be a bit of a pain because I don't have one yet. I guess I'll have to make it a very high priority to build one at Armok's throne. But while we're waiting for this to be built, let's uh, go over to the fleet screen. There's a few things I want to do. Firstly, one of them is called Structure, and this is basically Armok's throne. So I'm going to rename this. There we are, Assign Name. Now, the Wanderer and the Plunderer are basically fleet unto themselves, but I would actually like to merge them together as a new fleet, and I'm going to name this fleet the Armox Militia. Oh, I can have fleet names with uh, spaces. That's fantastic. I wonder if that's been added in a latest patch. Oh, I hope so. I will double check that. So, in fact, can I check that now? Can I rename you? Can I rename you? Can I tell you to be... <gasps> No. 
Lied to me, you did. <laughs> I was so happy for a moment. You scallywag, you. Okay, I need to rename this again. From Plunderer to Armox Militia. I wonder if we can have apostrophes. No, we can't. Too much to hope for. Right, so we've got Armox Throne, Armox Militia. Uh, the HMS Kororo, I mean, that's a fleet unto itself, so that's fine. Um, I'm not going to rename the Abaya fleet just yet. I need to think of a good name for like a construction slash frontline fleet, because it's effectively what it is. Home sweet home, this place. I think we'll come up with a different name. Oh, the hairband was finished, is it? Yes, it is. It's it's trying to mate. Well, that's not good. That's really not good. Could you perhaps let me take control? This this is going to hurt. I'm not going to pretend that it's not, but it is necessary. So I hope you can forgive me. Uh, I need. Are you in there? Correct. Like okay, let's pop in a miscellaneous vehicle scrapper. Build it. Sorry about this, Starting Fortress, but it has to be done. Goodbye. You did a good job. You, the handover is complete. Destroy scrapped object completely. There we are. It is gone forever. And in its place, a new Hey Benno. Now, of course, anything named Hey Benno needs a name. And that, of course, goes to yourselves in the comments. It doesn't necessarily need to be mythological, but props if it is. I do like having a sort of theme to my fleet's names, and a mythological uh, sort of theme is as good as any other, in my opinion. Now, you can just basically stay here and uh, gather all of these resources happily, and uh, once I've got a, a an actual class, an outpost class name, the first one will be named that, and then the ones after it will be named from the master name list as usual. So... Uh, for now, I'm going to come out of build mode. Don't need that anymore. We're going to pull you out of play. And we are going to jump back over here. Just have a quick look. Nothing untoward seems to be going on. Everything seems to be going pretty well, in fact. Uh, Abaya, you take position there, please. Now, Plunderer, are you, are you okay? Are you relatively healthy? I just don't know. Plunderer seems relatively healthy. Okay, well, what we could do in between now and the next episode, I'm going to have the Abaya try to repair at least the Eric Martin. It's going to aim to get the Eric Martin fully healed before starting work on the Sobek, I think. Let me uh, jump over to the Abaya. Am I actually on the Abaya at the moment? I, I hope I am. I am now. There we go. So we've got a fair bit of metal. Well, actually, no. We had a few thousand. It's all gone. My god, the Sobeks are expensive to build. But I'm sure we'll be able to get this put back together pretty soon. Now, where is... Oh, that is a problem. Okay, glad I checked that. The last thing we need to do here, you need to be in your own fleet. And you also need to be... Where are you? Hey, Banu, you need to be right about here. Right, so that is it for this episode. Name suggestions in the comments, please. Again, doesn't necessarily need to be mythological. Props if it is, though. It's nice to have a bit of a theme. And given that many of our other ships are already named after mythological entities, even Armok is named effectively after uh, mythology. It's just uh, the Dwarf th Fortress mythology. So uh, that would actually be quite nice if we can continue with that. But that is it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you'll be joining me for the next. But until then, and as always, do take care. <laughs>